you could disrupt them, but not if you're having such a bad time that you have like no items, no mobility, then you can't really save anyone either. All right, here we go. We are into our last series of the day. It is Shopify Rebellion versus Team Secret here. Game number one. For those of you who are just tuning in, you missed a few series here today, but you made it in time for potentially a banger of a final series. So we'll see how this ends up unraveling as we've got RTZ on his Ursa uh, in this bottom lane, but going to be playing up against Boom's Enigma. So I'm very, again, I think this is going to be a very interesting lane to watch to see how they can play it because Ursa, you really want to like use this like overpower Fury swipes, but against a hero like the Enigma with the Eidolons, we might see him put some early points into that Earthshock. Mm -hmm. I think we'll see a lot of weird shenanigans. Uh, Tiny is a hero who can just like disrupt lanes, creep dragging, toss people around, things like that. And then you have the Eidolon sending things everywhere. Like I think they'll want to play for weird creep equilibrium to put Ursa in an uncomfortable spot. And then you can kind of just keep it there because Eidolons can just keep blocking, blocking camps. Uh, that was an interesting, like a really late smoke uh, from Shopify there allows them to grab all these runes as Puppy falling very low, but Chrysalis on the Slark just trying to chase down Saberlight, but they don't have the movement speed. And here comes the Lashrac as well. Corden falling incredibly low. Do they have the spells? They don't. So he's going to survive. Uh, well, Velocor's got a disruption in two seconds. He really wants to try and get this timber saw. If he can oh, get the, 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 the vision, maybe, but good jukes into the trees. And everyone will retreat the back animations. to their lanes. Yeah. Oh, that is a... That kind of start can really disrupt the lanes. Uh, Saberlight started off so low, had to burn through tons of regen. Uh, same in the mid lane. Corden just starting off. Less than half health. And top lane, we're seeing just the harassment damage already just come through, right? Puppy on this Crystal Maiden. As soon as you hit that level two, you become much scarier. Feed core is gonna have to use the disruption, uh, certainly to try and get his uh, Saberlight, you know, out of uh, out of danger. Yeah, if they get some good harass though, I could see them willing to use disruption to set up the stomp to get a kill, but they probably need a couple levels to get more burst damage from the Centaur. So last game we saw Timbersaw on the off lane have a fantastic time. This time he's in mid up here against the Lashrak. He's got an early point in the reactive armor. I imagine he probably doesn't put many more points in this. Like he'll probably put two points, maybe leave it, start going for the timber chain eventually. But it is mid and you can't play around the timber chain all that much. So we'll see what he kind of like opts to do. But yeah, it's a little awkward. I'm, I'm not sure either. We'll have to keep our eye on it. Puppy actually doesn't have much mana available to him, and his courier is still heading back to base. So I was saying, like, you play around this level two timing from the Crystal Maiden, but he doesn't have any mangoes to fall back on, and that is gonna kind of be pretty solid for Shopify at the moment as we get a little bit of a pause here. Uh, some hotkey issues. It happens, you know. Yeah, I don't know what it is that happens, but it regularly happens, like, <laughs> where something gets reset somehow. I don't know what it is, but it, it definitely happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, in the bottom lane, we did see a little bit what we talked about. They did get the, the, the creep equilibrium to come back. It's pushed out a little bit, but already on its way back into secret. So it really kills Ursa's aggression, who usually likes to run down people and build up those furry swipes if they're by their tower. And these heroes have like Malefice, you got Avalanche later on. He's actually holding the skill point for now, but it will be hard to make any aggressive plays oh, on this no. Ursa. He got the pull off of the one troll and that's gonna keep the wave pulled all the way back. Wow, that is uh, very unfortunate. They are, they are just crushing this off lane with Secret right now. Like this Enigma has six denies, 13 lasts. It's to the only the nine of this Ursa. They're going to get the uh, the Lotus as well. Yeah, this is quite nice for them. Good start to the lane for sure. Man, Tiny as well, just being able to deny is super annoying, right? Just like you can go tree grab level one, you have like 90 damage. Mm -hmm. We saw him toss his tree trying to snipe that courier. Tree toss does count as the melee attack, so it will instantly kill the couriers. 
That would have been pretty nice. This is, I mean, it was a good read. Like, he immediately dodged it into the trees. Mm -hmm. as, it's like, Eki's like kind of baiting. Like, the Eidolons were just about to split. And he's like, yeah, go on me. It'll be fine, guys. It's like, you just get Malefist <laughs> and clicked by six Eidolons. It's not a good trade. Yeah, it, it's a fun lane for Tiny this time. Enigma... It, it handles everything in terms of the last hitting and the denies. So you just you just get to play this disruptor role. Like, I'm going to mess with them, chase their couriers, do a lot of pulls, block camps, and then eventually start roaming mid. We see his boots queued up. Doesn't really need to come right now, I imagine. Uh, but as, as he has those boots, six minutes, I'm sure we'll see him make his way over. That was a very good rotation from Thelacor to grab that water rune away because mid lane, like Yopaj is starting to struggle a little bit. Did burn through a lot of mana there and Corden does not have a bottle refill. So that uh, will save him actually quite a bit. It looks like Corden has opted for a 202 build to your point. There's not really a lot of trees to work with in the mid lane. So just skipping it for now. I'm sure he'll get an early point like soon maybe here at level five because uh, you do want that for some mobility as you consider moving around we're gonna see bottom lane rtz try to get active with just this really early boots purchase and a magic wand like he's starting to realize he's he's not farming uh well he just got caught by a centaur which is pretty rough like he's not really able to see us very well in this lane so the idea is like maybe i can find some kills the counter though is boom also rushes boots of speed so he uh reads that very well yeah the sad thing for an ursa too is you don't really jungle all that fast so getting kills in the lane is a big way you expedite your farm to get to your battle fury well sometimes you go a different build but the battle fury is pretty common and it does look like he's got it queued up so okay. he might need Yopaj to come rotate in as Yopaj hits six. He's pretty close. So we've been talking about this Ursa having a rough lane. Bruh, I'm just now looking at Chrysalis CS. He has 11 and Ursa is here Here's with away. boots trying to just dive him under the tower. The earth shock from the chase. He will just eventually get this kill and Felicor will be the one that finds it with those four points of the shadow poison and crystal maiden. Not a notoriously fast hero, I'll be honest. So one more pop here from Felicor. He wants to give it to Arteezy and he does. Okay. Yeah, you can't fight bottom. Bring the Ursa top. That's one way to do it. You lost yeah, your tower bottom, though. That is not looking <laughs> good. Well, almost yeah. lost your tower. It was going to be fall at, at some point, right? It was. It's It's kind of unavoidable versus an Eidolon. But yeah, they're doing fantastic top. Grabbing another kill on this Tiny, too. That's the kind of rotations I think you need to make. And it's really hard call to make. Um to like leave your lane so early as this level three or four ursa but they kind of recognize like the way this lane is going is not good for me we need to do something different i'm just gonna i'm gonna give you a quiz here so our observers let's not do it yet where do you think this slark is on the net worth if you could take a guess oh it's low <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> uh i was Give me a number. I, six. I don't fifth, think six, he's seven. I don't think he's below a support yet, but I think it's close. So I'll put All six. Right. Survey says, can we swap over? Where are we at? Oh, he's below the Shadow Demon. No. Oh, that's because oh. Shadow Demon got the kill. He got the first one. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's rough, man. That is a rough start for your Slark. And Thelacor, I mean, having that extra gold, he has mana boots like just really early. So he's able to just kind of chill in his lane. And we're going to see him probably start just stacking now that this top lane is, is you know, both both off lanes have taken their tower basically, right? Like you can't send the Ursa bottom to the Enigma, but you could put the Centaur down there. And I imagine the Shadow Demon is going to be spending a lot of time in this triangle for the next few minutes. Yeah, he's already got some stacks set up. I, I think Leshrac could get the first set of stacks since yeah. Ursa can't even do it anyways. Uh, but if you get your Leshrac off to a strong start, looks like he has Akaya queued up and Eternal Shroud next. Like, get him going. He'll make the space for Ursa while Ursa catches up with the Battle Fury. I like that decision. It's like the Ursa, the Lesh is going to be like your big playmaker. It's also your big counter to this Timbersaw. And of, honestly, even the Enigma. If like you go to Black Hole, this 
this Lesh, if Lesh has, you know, Pulse Nova going, plus, like, Edict and stuff, uh, you can kill this hero, right? Like, so I, I like the idea of just kind of dumping all of your gold into this Lesh here for the moment. Who currently has an Amplify Damage rune. Mm, looked at that tiny, but it wasn't fast enough to get there. Looks like it'll just be a farming rune. All right, for the moment, three to zero is not like a like a big deal in terms of the of the kill score. It's the three thousand gold lead that worries me, because mm -hmm. this Slark is now neck and neck with the five position Rubik, who basically didn't get to play his lane either. So, looking a little bit rough. Does get a great D ward there as well. So, well now Rubik has passed him. <laughs> Ooh, that's a that's a rough spot to be as a carry. Uh, he doesn't have a six yet either. Like you can at least recover in the jungle if you're six, but they both carries got booted out of their lane so early, but I think Ursa's a little bit more favored in those situations, especially because he had a better time than Slark. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it last game, right? One of the big things, uh, one of the big differences is G2 IG really emphasize bringing heroes into the Slark lane to make sure he gets to his level six in time. They're looking for Saber Light here. I don't think you guys have as much damage as you think you do. He's got a Veil. Yeah, okay, he's got Stampede available as well. He's kind of holding off for the moment. He will finally use it, but you've brought Boom to the top lane as mid lane. They are smoked up here, but they will find nothing. Okay, they at least boot the centaur out, and that is going to make some space for Chrysalis here on this Slark. Yeah, they were hoping to find something mid since Secret committed four heroes top. They're like, okay, let's try to punish Timbersaw real quick, but getting Corden not to do anything too crazy in that time. Though, Disruption. actually. And the, no, I mean, a classic great combo, Corden. He's caught by the purge, but he does manage to temper chain away. Boom, though, he comes in. He just drops the black hole. They don't have the spell still for moving. They got the telekinesis. His Yopaj is falling low. He's trying to get away. He pops the regen. It might be enough to keep him alive, and it is a nice route there onto Thelacor. They turn it around. Boom, goes down. The numbers are here from Shopify. The stolen frostbite takes Corden as well. Kitrak absolutely owning this fight on the Rubik. Dude, new regen rune is so good. It's pop such it while a running out to live, and then you just turn around because you're healed up. It just can't be canceled. Now you're gonna get a tier one mid too. 4K, probably gonna go up to like 5K as they take this tower. That is a really good spot for Shopify Rebellion. Dude, the yeah, the, I think he had a salve even as well on Yopaj. I couldn't tell, but we'll see here in this replay. Like. The Black Hole comes out, they saw the spell still, so it was a good call from Boom, but Kitrak holding the telekinesis. Dude, yeah, that regen just... Yeah, he gets tossed a salve from Thelacor. That's what it was. Dude, what a sick play. What a player. Dude, I can't wow. believe that fight started with the diving a timber saw behind the tier yeah, one. That's right? usually a recipe for a disaster. But it leads them to a triple kill, I think it was. So... yeah. And that, like, that was everyone on Shopify getting active in that fight. And mm -hmm. yeah, you make a little bit of space for your Slark, who is finally level six. But this dude, this is not a notoriously fast farming hero. They're going for the repeat here in the mid lane. This dive behind the tower doesn't quite pay off for them. They have to pop the Stampede to get Yopaj to safety. But Kitrak, he's not going to be able to do so. He ends up going down. Really nice turnaround there. Is all set up on the back of that Avatos back from Eki. Yeah, it looks a little bit more like what Seeger was hoping for in that last fight. Unfortunately, only picking up some support kills. But you'll take it when you're this far behind. Even support kills are worth quite a lot. They do have the blink on Saberlight, and I don't know if Shopify are aware of this. So they smoke up right away. They know Chrysalis is bottom. They saw him showing on the wave, and he is going to run right into them. The blink's on, but he gets the Shadow Dance. They waited, actually, just a moment. He doesn't have the pounce available, but I don't think you can actually close the gap out. here. He TPs in to pop the drums. Nicely done from Boom. Fast was, fingers. Very I mean, nice. you had the smoke advantage. I don't know what they were waiting for. I I don't know. He 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 did blink out of the smoke, and Crystal has still managed to press all the buttons fast enough. Uh, and the important thing is that he popped his ult because otherwise, in that stun time, 
uh, disruption might have come in into play, which would yeah. lead up to the AOE stun from Split Earth, which does not care about the stun or the the Shadow Dance. So very good from him to just be willing to commit that right off the bat and that let him get out. But it is a bit sad for Shopify Rebellion. They would have loved that kill. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're looking good, though. Still decent, decent start to the game for them. Mm -hmm. 3,000 gold advantage. Ursa has fully recovered as he is now closing in on that Battle Fury. I mean, he should have this by the 15-minute the mark. And for being in a pretty rough start uh, to his game, I, I think you have to be pretty happy about that. Yeah, I love the way he adapted, rotating top twice, once for a kill, then for the tower. We see him show up to a mid fight. Um, oh, puppy, yeah, it's helped puppy. him out. Ooh. That is a, a pretty dead Crystal Maiden, I believe. As Kitrak comes in, he's got himself a Chakram. <laughs> and yeah, that's a lot of damage. Chakram's a great steal for a Rubik. I want to ask you, Crystalis yeah. has Mage Slayer and then a Midas queued up. And I get it, he's really behind. I find it interesting he's getting the Mage Slayer first though, and not just like, I gotta go straight into this Midas recover mode. I mean, you need a mana regen item on Slark for sure to be able to jungle. It's like one of those things, like a lot of times you either just like fairied clarities constantly, mm -hmm. or you would have like Echo Saber, right, in the past, or now it's something like, uh, oh my gosh, Chrysalis getting fished so out flush. here, but able to get into the trees. Nice Ooh. play there from him. But again, they are forcing him out of like the map in terms of being mm -hmm. able to farm and put in like a kind of a safer spot, so. I don't think uh, Yopaj is too bummed about that. He's got a haste rune, so he's just going to farm up these last little camps and head back towards mid. But uh, yeah, I think he, it's just because he needs a mana item, like legitimately. Like, Slark can't farm without a mana regen. Gotcha. Yeah, that's fair. I thought maybe like Crystal Maiden Aura might be enough, but I guess she only has one point in it, so it's only, it's only 0.4 mana regen for Slark. So, great yeah. point. And maybe he can see how it goes. You know, like you, you work on the Mage Slayer, you get a couple kills, you're like, oh, well, I guess I guess I'm kind of recovered. I don't need the Midas now. Yeah. The Midas will be like, uh, all right, we're not doing much. Oh, mid lane. Kitrak gets found, but a nice stomp turnaround here from Saberlight. Kitrak's trying to get away. The Stampede does the work. The Enigma's the first to fall. They actually get a return freezing field, buying some space. But here comes Arteezy. He's got his eyes set here on Puppy. Gets himself a double kill. It's a two for one. As Shopify looking for more, but a very quick response. The TP's in right away. And they get the Enigma. I mean, that's the best opportunity. The best way to start this fight honestly it is the downside of going for auras as enigma is that you're a great hero to just walk up Dyer's and do things but it puts you at the most risk of getting chain stunned like that and not being able to use black hole compared to a blink where you get to wait see the right heroes and then go in he's he's not queuing up the blink so i mean it's just going to keep happening they're i don't know i guess it's unfortunate though that they were in the low ground on that river as that fight broke out so yeah uh, maybe if it had just like slightly different positioning it would have been fine yeah absolutely and the other thing too is pipe is really good this game it is mm -hmm. an incredibly good pipe game right you're against lesh and a centaur uh i mean you add rubik onto there it's just even more but to be able to try and reduce some of that initial burst that's going to come out from these heroes i think is going to go a long way yeah, and in that fight, we did see Corden do a lot of damage on his Timber Saw. Uh, yeah. Even without, he hasn't even built a Yash or anything like that. He has the Van Brace on Intelligence, so a little bit of amp there. Uh, but if they do get that black hole into just Timber Saw throwing in all the spells, it's pretty much however many heroes you black hole, that is however many heroes you're going to kill. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely a little bit surprising. We're not seeing like one of the magic amp items, whether that be the Kaya or the Veil, but I, I kind of like the idea of going the Blink Dagger because they need someone to go in to make uh, like something happen that they can follow it up here with potentially with the Enigma as the drums are going to come through Kitrak, trying to just make his way up onto the high ground. He gets disrupted, a nice save. Did he get a spell steal off? He doesn't. They will turn it around finally, but Corden just chopping through these heroes. They don't have any way out. And now Saberlight in some trouble. He blinked in for this. 
Nice black hole from Boom. They've caught Leshrac on the backside. Can they bring him down in time? Kristoff will pop that Shadow Dance with the Mage Slayer. Great Avatos in from Eki as well. Four for zero. Secret managed to take the fight to Shopify. That is huge for them. Indeed, Crystal. Guys, I'm good. I don't need the Midas. Go back for the Ags. I wasn't going to build that. That's crazy talk. A really nice one. They just found like one after another. Like Shopify Rebellion was kind of in the, the same area. But yeah, we see the replay here. Like first we find the Rubik. Timber just blinks in, makes the space. So like they feel like they can't walk past him. Eki gets a great grab on the Shadow Demon. Throws him back. By the time Saber Light goes in, like they're all dead. So... Yeah, see, we're really happy with the way this fight broke out. Dude, this to me is the main difference between Timbersaw and Centaur. Timbersaw does damage. Centaur does not do damage right now. Like, without having that Shiva's completed, uh, this hero definitely struggles in terms of the damage department, but it means you also don't have things like an Eternal Shroud, something to make you super tanky. And Corden, he just goes in, he finds the Lash. They do manage to steal the Chakram here on Kitrak, and with that, actually, you just be very careful. You're not tanking to pure damage, my friend. Kitrak takes him down in the Stampede to try and make some space, to try and slow them up, to get the, the gap closes. Arteezy is not that far. Great Avalanche here from Eki, but here comes the Centaur, gets the Stomp, catches the top and the rest of the team will be here to help clean him up. Yopaj gets himself a double. A Malefice here picked up on Kitrak, but I don't know if they can get on top of Boom. Blink on cooldown for three seconds. They're gonna try. Saberlight gets the vision for the moment. And with that, Malefice will make it very difficult. So he will survive. For having no legs, this Enigma is pretty fast. <laughs> All right, BKB in the works for Ursa. It's almost done. They can do Roche. Secret will struggle to do Roche. Slark needs to win a fight to get the stacks before he can really do it. I, they could with the Timbersaw. It would just be really slow. So I, I think Seek, uh, Shopify Rebellion, as they grab this BKB, they're going to start feeling ready to go. I wouldn't be surprised if they set up for Roche on. That is... Uh... <laughs> A little bit of an oof, you know? It happens every once in a while. Uh, you know, you, you go to do Tormentor. Your Ursa's like, come on, buddy, just do it. It'll be fine. He just presses Enrage, and then you die instead. It's good stuff. Good uh, stuff for the team. Yeah. Kitrax the one who gets the shard. I mean, that's a good one. Uh, Rubik always can get a lot done with an early shard. Oh, he's even got Malathus already, too. Yeah. Looks like nothing crazy for the first, the 21 minute wisdom rune. Sometimes we see pros do this, uh, especially as the tier one towers fall, but in this time, both offlane tier ones are still up. Uh, so I guess just not, not feeling the timings right for this to sometimes like you make an aggressive play, steal the wisdom, take their tormentors, all of that. It's a, it's a nice swing for your team. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think it's really that easy for Secret to grab their own Tormentor. Like, you need the Timbersaw for sure, but mm -hmm. uh, you might need... It's just, it's slow, right? Like, they don't have yeah. as much burst damage like an Ursa does. Yeah, that's true. You do need the Timbersaw in a lot of those. Like, if you want to take a team fight, you need Timbersaw there. You want to do objectives, you need Timbersaw there. A lot being put on his shoulders right now. Currently, Boom looking does for have him. his pipe done, though. They're trying to bait this rune. They're like, come on. All right, they will just bottle it up here on the Ursa. And honestly, I think for them, that's like a, let's go Roche. Like we have BKB done on Ursa. We have an Amplify damage as well. So they are smoked Smoking up, smoke. looking for their hero. Black Hole oh, yeah. and Pipe are up. It's daytime. I mean, this favors the side of Shopify, but they get a great opening. The Avalanche, the toss, Saberlight so low, but he gets the BKB off and the Stampede. He's going to get to safety. That's a great opening. It's time for Arteza to go in. Boom, you can't just let the black hole rip. He just runs away instead, but they get the disruption. Blinking from Thielicor. They're looking to try and get him. There's the black hole stolen right away from Kitrak. Will they get the return? Eki goes in. The Avalanche does manage to catch them. He ends up sending Kitrak away. He's like, I don't want my team to get caught by this. But it's Puppy now in danger, stuck underneath this dust. He gets caught, and there it is. The black hole onto two from Kitrak. Can they follow it up? Who's it going to be? It just uses to make space to get away. They get the Crystal Maiden. They're dancing around the fight perfectly. Eki goes in, does manage to find this Rubik, but it's going to cost him his own life. 
Oh boy. A four for one and a dieback on your tiny. This is the downside. Slark's been recovering, but he's still behind. He just wasn't able to do much there. I think, like, I saw him have, like, five stacks at most. He just did not feel comfortable walking into that fight uh, anywhere. Whereas you saw Ursa literally just jump in, get black hold, live through that, and then kill other people. So, yeah, really struggling to, like, recover. Even after that earlier fight, he didn't have the Ags yet. I think if he has the Ags, Chrysalis feels more comfortable coming into that. But because of that, Shadow 5 Rebellion solidifies their lead. Now putting the Aegis onto Arteezy. Almost has a blink as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the big part of this is they did not know Sableye had BKB. Uh, like, they, they struck the fight with uh, the Timber Saw Blinken, the Blinken from the Tiny, the Avatars. He gets down to like a third HP. And they're like, go, go, go. You know, get Centaur, pounce in. And he like pounces in, uses Shadow Dance. He just. BKB stampedes away, and speaking of stampede, it's used bottom oh as RTZ God. goes to just destroy. Boom! Chrysalis has to get out now, as he's got these stacks on top of him, and they do not wear away for a good while, so he'll be forced to pounce away with that Aghanim Scepter. But his team's caught Puppy on the backside, and that is the Bloodstone done on Yopaj, so these split Earths are huge. Uh, okay, you know, Kitrak, he was feeling himself, goes in to try and find some bonus kills and stuff, <laughs> just getting bursted instead. Puppy will finally end up going down. A tanky Crystal Maiden, that took a while. Yeah. Glimmer yeah, Cave your... plus the Pupil's Gift. Yeah, they're fine with it, though. They, they're they feeling it. They're starting to play aggressively onto Secret's half of the map. Well, I say that actually Theolacor went back to uh, stack real quick. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I'm surprised oh, they didn't yeah. push a little bit, but I think this comes back to the, like, how do you maximize the value of Aegis? And if you actually just, like, rush a team fight after taking Roche, but you happen to lose that team fight, then you've kind of wasted that whole Aegis timer by losing yeah. it right away. But if you kind of, like, you win a fight, but you chill, you don't push it too hard, the whole time the enemy team is like, ah, like, do we really want to fight into Aegis? Like, we kind of have to wait for five minutes, so... I, I've been liking this, seeing like some of these teams take it a little more disciplined, and then as you get down to that last two, one minutes on that Aegis timer, they're like, okay, now we go really hard. Yeah, and he's just staying bottom here on this Ursa, like threatening the tower. They don't really see too many of the Shopify heroes, so they're a little bit hesitant to go in. And Saberlight ends up finding some Eidolons, so he'll just clean these up. Yopaj is incredibly scary, man. He does a lot of damage. There's gonna be the disruption into the split earth. Can they bring down Boom in time? Of course, he can't just throw this black hole. He's got the heroes just surrounding him, and that is just a dead enigma again. Kitrak always hiding. Like, he's not gonna give it up. Yeah, great positioning by him, not showing until they have Enigma dealt with. Either you know Enigma's way out of the fight, or you kill him like that, which they did pick Enigma into Rubik, uh, so they kind of knew this is what they were getting into and why you often don't see Enigmas into the Rubik. Though I, I think the idea oh. of Secret was win the lane and go from there. Eki, goodbye, Eki. Trying to That's, creep cut, I think. Yeah, he was going to creep cut, ends up getting a random courier that flies overhead and hits the Lacor's courier. And this Shadow Demon has a blink, man. He has blink glimmer cape, so he just blinks onto the high ground, instantly demonic purges him, sets up a freebie for his team. Dude, I can't resist couriers either. If I see a courier, I gotta <laughs> kill it. I bait myself all the time on couriers. I'm glad Person. to know that doesn't change as you get into the pro scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Ursa also manages to pick up a Nemesis Curse. One of the few heroes that like this item feels really good on because you just want to kill one hero right to start mm -hmm. the fight like you're just like i'm gonna kill this one hero they're gonna take you know 12 percent more damage and it's like you're taking eight percent more but when you have the enrage at the ready it doesn't feel that bad yeah or ursa just often plays around aegis as well so like who cares like i died once because i took more damage i just respawn and we got one minute left on aegis i think they'll continue to stay in this area looks like they're gonna clean up all the towers here or all right, there's one more bottom but you're gonna open up top. Dude, I really like Yopaj's build on the last track. He he like didn't decide to build like a single offensive item until like 25 minutes, right? He goes Eternal Shroud, he goes Bloodstone, he goes Yules, and then he's like, all right, now 
I can build da more damage, right? So now he goes for Kaya. He has a uh, Sanj now completed. Now he's going to go back for the Blink Dagger. He just wants to survive, and I think that's a good read on this Euro. Yeah, maybe the buff from Diabolic Edict around with everything else. Centaur built him a Shiva's to amp his damage. He didn't need that much. He just needed to live, and then his spells just do a lot of damage on their own. Yeah. First Aegis expiring right now, so... I mean, a pretty successful first Aegis. So you've now increased your gold lead to 9,000. You've taken two tier two towers and Secret very much on the back foot at the moment. And you've got, you know, these double BKBs, the Shivas like you just pointed out. And this Leshrac is enormous. Yeah, I wonder if that's... Because I'm thinking back to when we were talking about Centaur versus Timbersaw and how Senator just doesn't do as much damage, but he does bring the utility. So if they have in mind a hero like Leshrac who will bring all the damage, then maybe that is the value of picking someone like Centaur over that Timbersaw yeah. in that first phase pick, because you know, like, damage was never my job anyways. Um, now I wonder, you know, if Leshrac got stolen out, <laughs> who you replace that with, but yeah. at, least, at least getting the Leshrac here, it, it looks pretty clean together. Yeah, I like it. I, I think you're. That's a really good, really good point. Ursa, go for the Abyssal Blade next. I mean, let's look at some of the big item pickups here on Secret that's been going on in this time frame. We finally have that Blink Dagger on the Enigma available. So maybe he doesn't get caught right away. Maybe he's able to get the actual Black Hole off in time. Um, Corden does have his Kaya Sanj working towards his Shivas now. It doesn't have bkb yet though so it's still pretty tough even with the blink because there's so many heroes who could cancel the black hole there's lift there's disruption there's uh split earth i don't think hoof stomp can reach it but actually hoof stomp's pretty wide so oh maybe... timber saw dang that is really unfortunate for him they were just smoking up crystal maiden barely doesn't pop the smoke there and he just timber chains into three heroes that is unfortunate that's dude, he has no buyback either. And that's why Eki is already in position to creep. Don't get baited by the courier again. Don't do it. He's like, I want it. He's gonna creep toss <laughs> He's gonna it. Do it. No, oh. it doesn't hit. Uh, unlucky. Okay, he's still here to creep cut though. Ooh, they they're the gonna wave, fortify though. to stop it. They realize so twofold, like if we lose our wave up here, he's cutting our next one. We won't get it. So they try to fortify, save their wave, and mess with the tiny. But looks like they're just going to play it safe. And I think that's fair because actually if you throw a fight here, you might lose Roshan if you're unlucky. And Roshan has a very fast spawn. So it's good to play it safe now. Just finish off that Roshan. Because like Secret pretty much can't stop you. If you go for Rosh, they're going to need to black hole literally all five members in the pit. So as long as you don't all stand in the pit, it's a pretty free Roshan. You're not going to give it up. And then you go back to the high ground. Yeah, it, it should spawn Radiant. I mean, it is going to spawn Radiant side, but it's like Kitrak can just hide in so many different areas, and it's he has built all mobility. He has Ogre Seal, Totem, Four Staff, Blink Dagger. It's like you're not going to have a good way of catching this Rubik, as we will see the Roche timer here. Nine seconds. <laughs> okay. Wow. I mean, they, they might catch Slark here, but if not, I mean, they'll just go straight to Roche. They're ready. The dark fact. There it is. They got the telekinesis, the instant burst, and he's just dead. He does have the buyback for the Shivas. It clips Puppy here. Do they have the detection? Can they cancel? They do. They've got a Yules. And now Puppy will be the next to fall. And with two dead, that feels really rough. Dude, Kitrak even steals the crystal clone. That's a fun <laughs> one. Yeah, great discipline from them. Yeah, seeing the Slark, but waiting for that that uh dark pack because that's that's pretty much how this gang attempt would fail is if you try to chain stun him but he uses dark pack gets the ult off and then is just like double pouncing away so they wait for that knowing that slarks often use it to farm they see it and then just like okay now we're now we're free just throw in every stun now guys it was such a sick play from Kitrak too it's just like instant stampede into force for that telekinesis from from just downtown right like just mm -hmm. getting that instant disable uh, and then the, just the, the follow-up stuns were just on the money. So that will be a full lane of barracks. You do have one fortification left here for Team Secret as the Slark is still dead for 10 seconds. 
I would be surprised if we don't see them back for just this Roshan, or maybe you just bait the high ground, but I feel like Roche is their win condition at this point, right? Yeah, I, I feel it's safer to get it. For a second, I was worried they were going to go for that that mid lane, but it does look like they're going back. Secret smoking after them. So they maybe if they can find a big black hole. Yeah, as, as you see, no one else show. The dire scans do come through. They saw the timber saw cut the wave. Like they know that they're here somewhere. The question is, will they get the positioning? They look, they actually find Saberlight. He just instantly pops the BKB. Stampede at the ready. They will throw it as they find Eki on the backside instead. And with no Tiny, the fight becomes a little bit difficult. He's going to buy back. Ursa goes in aggressively. Tugs take a lot of damage there. But Crystalis, he's just all on his own. Both pounces down. Needs to be careful as Yopaj is managed to get on top of the Timber Saw. The Split Earth is there. In comes Centaur. Nice force staff to dodge. He's actually stuck in a pretty rough spot. Boom, looking for his opening. He's got the Black Hole available. But Kit Track still sitting so far behind. Saberlight almost goes down to the Crystal Maiden, but a great save there from Thelacor. Saberlight's gonna be okay. RTZ's looking. He finds Boom in the trees. And no Enigma left. Corda gets chased down. He's got his hands on another. It's gonna be Tiny. The pushback as well. They're falling one by one. And just like that secret, it might be all over for them. That is some deja vu, man. I'm pretty sure we saw that same fight like 10 minutes ago in that exact same area. Try to initiate on Saberlight, but he just pops BKB off of that. Shopify Rebellion knows where everyone's standing, so they're free to pick the best fight. And then Boom was trying to play it patiently. It's so hard for him because he just can't show until he knows what Kitrak's doing. And so Kitrak just gets to sit out of the fight but he has way longer cast ranges, so he's still throwing in spells and contributing, whereas this aura, Enigma, he, like by being out of the fight, you're not contributing the auras, but you can't show in the fight because we're at the point, he's got to get a huge black hole for his team to have a chance. And it's just, it's a lot on him. Yeah, I mean, it really is. There's, it's just been, it's one of those things where it's like, which hero do you, like if you're playing this game, right? It's like your three position can't participate in the fight until the four position or i'm sorry until the five position on shopify is essentially dead or mm -hmm. has used spell steal and those conditions are so difficult it would have been better if slark had a good game because then slark could be the one to find the rubik and that would be very normal slark as like this backline hunting hero uh but with slark having had such a bad time he hasn't been able to do that and in that fight again we saw him kind of like running around but just not able to get to anyone because he's so far behind he has to be careful but it just means yeah he can't he can't find the rubik which means boom can't go in which means you're trying to do stuff with the other heroes but it's just this just not really leading to anything wow yopaj actually went back for a shivas of his own i was he had a blink queued up and i was kind of expecting something like an overwhelming blink or oh Thelicor just gets he's out he actually just gets saved thanks to the stampede and some four staffs and now they turn around onto chrysalis this is an amplified damage on this ledge it will get him some space thanks to the yules but chrysalis is falling so low arteezy just shreds these supports on the backside double kill for him Oh my goodness, they find the opening, but guess who they found? It's Boom, Kitrak has just got his number all game and the immediate GG comes out. No buyback on this Enigma that means there's no way you're holding high ground. What a game from Shopify. I will need to go back. And